Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Atomic Pop featuring Fat Man and Little Boy. I am Stephen Gorka. I'm Juan Farage. Juan, how was your weekend? How do you feel? I feel like shit. I see water. I see a Ricola. Yeah, man. Please. What are your symptoms? Uh, my throat hurt, coughing, con- like, what's that called? Congestion. Congestion. Okay. Yeah, runny nose, sneezing. Wow. I see the runny nose. The coughing. Oh. No, this is water, fucker. Oh. <laughs> the, the worst thing is the coughing because, like, you know, you cough so much you bruise your ribs and then it hurts to fucking cough. Yeah, oh, it's, it's that bad, huh? Yeah. It's that bad. Well. Being like, a smoker can't help. No, <laughs> Have you smoked this weekend? As far as I could. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, I thought it was getting dangerous for a while, so uh, I stopped. I couldn't oh, breathe. Oh my breathe. god! Okay, all right, all right. Okay, we have we have we have had Susie fed here at the house. That she's wearing, she, it, it looks like glow in the dark alien overalls. Are they glow in the dark at Susie fed? In a black light. They they are glow in the dark in a black light. <laughs> okay, that's cool. Anyways, um, listen, crazy stuff. You know, it, it Justice League comes out. In a little over a week, I, I I really thought we could have done like something about Justice League, top ten something about Justice League, but a bomb got dropped on us in uh, last week, and that is Brian Michael Bendis, arguably the the number one writer for Marvel Comics. For the look, whether you like it or not, he's he's their he's their guy, you know, it, oh, he's it's he, debatable. Well, either way, he's leaving Marvel Comics, going to DC Comics on an exclusive contract. So he can't even do shit with Image, nothing. He is yeah. he is DC's man exclusively. Yeah. So, holy shit. First of all, let's just talk about Brian Michael Bendis. All right? He's been right. Uh, have you done your research on the guy other than what you already knew? No, only what I know. I'm going off what I know here. All right. Well, I I, I, I know quite a bit because I'm actually a fan. I enjoy I enjoy yeah. his books, but uh, but I did a little extra research. Sure. He, he got in the comics uh, as far as writing is concerned in the early mid '90s. He did some stuff for Image. He did Sam and Twitch. Uh-huh. Uh, he did a Spawn series, um, and then in 2000, I guess his Sam and Twitch series was so successful. Joe Casada, who was editor in chief at Marvel, mm-hmm. hired him to be one of the writers to spearhead. The Ultimate Comics Universe. Okay. And it was him and Mark Millar that did it. Right. Mark Millar did Ultimates, Avengers. as we know. Yeah. And and uh, X-Men. And mm-hmm. Bendis did Ultimate Spider-Man. Yeah. Which was huge for Marvel Comics. Yeah. Ult- Ultimate, the Ultimate Universe as a whole was huge was for great. Marvel Comics. X-Men was pretty bad. Ultimate X-Men was great, dude. Are you I didn't kidding like me? It. Oh, my. I thought it was great. But that's Mark Millar. We're going to talk about that. Um Ultimate Spider-Man was amazing. It 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 it, it brought us a modern version of the character. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bendis spearheaded it, and you know, it was brutal too. Yeah, it's crazy shit happened. He killed Gwen Stacy like yeah. nasty style with like, carnage. With no? carnage. Yeah. yeah, and then she came back as like a carnage. Like carnage entity. ate her. Yes. Like ate her. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then if you guys haven't watched any of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, all, all the movies that. Have came out just not from Marvel, but from Fox and from Sony. You know, they kind of model after this Ultimate, Ultimate Universe, universe uh, design. You know, even Batman, even the Christopher Nolan Batman verse, which happened post Ultimate Universe. The thing that made the Batman Nolan verse great was that it 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 made Batman practical and modern. It's like if Batman really existed, how would that shit go down? His costume was more military like, you know, and the the ultimate universe was based around that. It's like how do we make superheroes practical in a modern day universe? And Bendis and Millar were the architects of that. And in addition to that, Bendis has created characters for Marvel. Yeah. He created Miles Morales. Miles Morales is definitely his. Uh who is easily going to be forever with Marvel Comics. He's not going anywhere. You know, he's a huge hit among Miles fans. Morales has to be probably the last big uh, original character created by Marvel that's 
as big as he is, right? I think, you know what, I, I guess you could say that, but I think Miles Morales is kind of a cheap shot in the terms of original. There's nothing really original about him other than who he is as a person. He's Spider-Man, basically. He's got very similar powers. He's got a couple different ones. He's got that 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 venom spike that that like like gets all people dizzy and shit like that. But essentially, it's 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 still Spider-Man. It's not a new power set. Yeah, but yeah, like Silk, character. Silk wasn't as as popular as, as Silk, Miles Morales. Silk so. wasn't as popular. Gwen no. Stacy for a while, for a while. Um, yeah, but uh, he all. Spider Gwen. Listen. Bendis also created Jessica Jones. Yes, he did. Uh, who, I'm sorry, she's got a TV show. That's huge. Yeah. You know, a successful one. You know, um, he kind of redefined the Defenders in that sense, too. Mm -hmm. The Defenders originally was Doctor Strange. Um, I forget who else was in it at, off the top of my head. Uh, but, but, um, oh, I think Enchantress was in the, the Hulk. Something like that, whatever. Anyways. Doctor Strange. Hulk. Um, but, it, Bendis really he invented Jessica Jones he invented uh, Miles Morales um, he wrote House of M yeah which was amazing really great the No More Mutants thing which changed mutants in the course of the Marvel Universe for easily 10 years like mutants were not being born it was a huge deal because of that he did Age of Ultron I'm not talking about the movie I'm talking about the comic which was amazing also. Nice time travel alternate reality story based around the character Ultron. He did Avengers Disassemble. He killed Hawkeye and brought him back to life no. eventually. You know, but that was a huge deal when that happened. He created Riri more recently, no? He created Riri, uh, which which was the Iron Man. Uh, the, I the new Iron, Iron Heart. Iron Heart, yeah. Yeah, Iron Heart. Um, and the MIT student, and and she's a great character too. She's a good character. Uh, he he did he did Civil War two. Civil War two is his most recent thing, which a lot of people hated on. You know, if you didn't read Civil War two, it's the Inhuman precog that basically says what the future is going to be like. Minority Report. Yeah, basically, basically in a sense, and it killed Tony Stark. Well, put him into hibernation, and and then Bendis created the Tony Stark AI, which I, th I thought was a genius move on his behalf and Marvel's behalf to still have Tony Stark be the character we know, but he's the AI in the suit and Riri is the new character. And, uh, you know, mark my words, Robert Downey Jr. is going to be in the Marvel Cinematic Universe for the rest of his life. He may not be the Tony Stark we know in physical form, but he will become the AI that we see in the Riri Williams Iron Man. <coughs> and his voice, he'll, he will be the Jarvis in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Sure. As, as long as he wants to, because right. obviously he's going to age and stuff like that, and and that all goes back to Bendis. Yeah. He did Secret Invasion, okay, which was the scroll takeover. The scroll takeover. He made Spider Woman cool again, yeah, okay, and relevant. Um, he did Dark Reign mm -hmm. uh, and the Dark Avengers, which was an amazing run. Into Siege, which we talked about last week yeah. from Thor. He he wrote Siege. Um, I mean, holy! Am I missing something here? No, he's he's been pretty um, much involved in every major event for for Marvel not in the past twenty years. Absolutely, not to mention his icon line, which has powers on it. United yeah. United States of Murder Inc. Yeah, he um, also um, you know, he was very involved with the Marvel Cinematic Uni Universe when it started as a consultant. Absolutely, yeah, as a consultant, yeah. he they he's the one. He was part of that whole board, the comic board that was mm -hmm. working with Faggy, and uh, I Feige, believe Feige, I Feige. believe that's part of the reason that he left Marvel. Why? Um, Kevin Faggy decided basically they cut the board out. They said Bendis, you are no longer going to have any input whatsoever they, they, into I totally the Marvel about Cinematic did, Universe. Yeah. yeah. And by I, and and I think that's important to note because in in the release, the statement from DC, they made sure to um, point out that he was going to be involved in all aspects of the DC Universe. Right, kind of pointing out that he would probably be also working with Jeff Johns in the DC Cinematic Universe. So the fact that DC went an extra effort to point that out must mean that it really must have bothered Bendis at Marvel. Well, let's talk about something here, too. Like, uh, it, it's funny. Like, you brought up Jeff Johns. If you guys don't know who Jeff Johns is, I've always explained, whenever I'm talking to uh, people coming into the shop, I've always explained that Jeff Johns is to DC what Bendis is to Marvel. You know, Bendis is, is is not as a good of a writer. 
Um, the thing with Bendis is Bendis is Marvel's most consistent writer. Look, what, he's not their best writer, but his stuff is always good and it's always y- consistent. You know what? I think that's up to personal preference, personal opinion, all that stuff like that. I mean, you can't say that. What what I tell people this? I say you read a Jeff Johns book, you read a Michael Bendis book. You're gonna get a good story, regardless. It's consistent. It's ne- it's not gonna blow your mind. That's what I just said. Yes, but I just but, said that. I know, but you said that about Bendis. I think it the same applies to Jeff Johns. You know, Je- they, they 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 both have done things that have, that have been mind blowing, but they both have been stuff that's been not as mind blowing. But either way. It's never bad. Yeah, yeah, it's consistent. You know, it, it, they are both consistent writers, and you know, if you pick up a Jeff Johns or a Brian Bendis book, it's going to be good. You know, I, I also Bendis also did Guardians of the Galaxy, brought a- Angela yeah, yeah, in, into the universe. Um, it, 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 I mean, he didn't create the Guardians of the Galaxy people, but but he he did reboot the 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 series around the time that Part One of the movie came out. So Bendis has been huge for Marvel. What does this mean for Marvel moving forward? What do you what do you think? Well, number one, you got to understand that that Bendis was also well liked. Um, there's definitely within Marvel a lot of Bendis supporters. Yeah, and there's a lot of contracts coming up, and I don't think we're going to see just how impactful the Bendis signing was until a lot of these other artists and writers from Marvel come up for contract negotiations. Um, they're estimating six or seven other people might just leave just because Bendis isn't there anymore. Wow, I mean. I think it's no doubt a huge blow to Marvel Comics. Not to mention Marvel Comics has been in a really nasty slump. And and also, I, I think with Bendis' thing, so I think them cutting them out of the movies was was terrible idea. Yeah. Right? Um, because it's like a demotion. Yeah, yeah. totally. Um, then the whole backlash against Marvel um, with the whole... Uh, Oh my god, dude! I'm I'm so fucking I'm fucked, dude. I, I don't even know the diversity thing. Yes, right. That obviously affected, uh, allegedly affected Bendis in a personal way. That he didn't like how Marvel went and handled it because, let's you know, Bendis writes minority characters. Not not solely, but not yeah. solely, but yeah, like, yeah. and he likes these characters. He actually loves Riri, um, and he believes that Marvel in trying to undo what they did is going about it the complete wrong way, completely the wrong way. Yeah. Um, they they're not consulting him. Like I I just think they're not giving him. They're not consulting him how they should. Like the power that he should have at Marvel is not giving it to him. He lost power over the movies. He's lost. You know, he, he doesn't get a say in the Marvel Universe anymore. He doesn't get a say in the future of Marvel when it comes to their diversity uh, and how they're going to react to all that. Like, they're stripping so many things away from him. Understood, but what what does this mean for Marvel moving forward? That's my question. Well, we don't... I we, mean, you, you, said, you said contract negotiations coming up, but what else? I mean, like, here's what I heard. I heard, I heard Marvel's really going to go after some indie writers, some, some... Marvel's already going after indie writers, so I think Marvel signed on Donny Cates to do um, Doctor Strange. Which tell people who, who don't know who that is. Like, Donny Cates does um, a bunch of indie comics. He does some for Image. He does Rednecks. He did God Country. Both are really, really good. Redneck is hugely yeah, suc- successful. Really successful. Right um, on, on an indie level. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah. then he did Baby Teeth for Aftershock Comics, which is for them, it's been a huge book. So even Aftershock admits it. For Aftershock, You know, at yeah. the cons, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and Baby Teeth, is it's not a unique idea. It's, it's basically the, the Antichrist being born. Um, and he's just such a good writer that he he it's he's really compelling. Same thing with Rednecks. You see, Rednecks is hugely popular. It's only about, it's really, it's Redneck Vampires. Yeah. Right. But he's a really good writer. So they got, they picked him up to do uh, to do um, Doctor Strange. Um, I know they're going after a few more indie writers. And what I think Marvel needs to do now is lock up Jason Aaron. Like Jason Aaron need they need to throw everything at Jason Aaron and lock him down. Jason Aaron did the Marvel Legacy, the reboot um, himself. They also they also need to they need to go after the guy that did uh, Secret Empire, the Captain America guy. Right, Nick Spencer. Yeah. Right, uh, and 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 the Nick Spencer, I don't believe he's on an exclusive contract. Jason Aaron for sure is not, because Jason Aaron yeah. also writes for Image Comics. Yeah, for sure. Um, but they need to throw everything they can at Jason Aaron. Uh, going after Donny Cates is a good idea, but they need to go after more independent publisher and make them Marvel only. 
Yeah, I, Jason Aaron would be huge. Look, Jason Aaron's a guy that did Legacy. He the reboot. He wrote that. That's his idea. I mean, I'm sure they gave him the parameters. Yes, but he's kind of controlling where Legacy's going. He is, but I I think Marvel also needs to go after a big celebrity name. And when I say big celebrity ma- name, I'm not talking someone in Hollywood. I'm talking in the comic world. If you look at what DC has done, DC got Jim Lee. What 15 years ago? Yeah. All right, and his that. Jim Lee is a comic book icon celebrity. He's up there with Frank Miller. All the Frank, you know, Frank Miller writes. For, Frank Miller just recently wrote for DC. Too, Absolutely, like, DC's you going. Know, the, like Marvel needs to find someone. Whether that's what, whether that you know, like whether that's Todd McFarlane. Whether, that's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> it's not gonna happen at all. But that, that's the problem. Who, who can they go see? But, DC but, got the but, jump but, on but them. it's that level. You know, they, there's no they, one on that level. You know, uh, uh, um, Rob Liefeld, no, not gonna work out. You know, uh, Mark Silvestri from from Cyberforce and Witchblade, not gonna work out either. Eric Larson, no, not those guys. Uh, it, it, you know, no one cares about Chris Claremont anymore, unfortunately. You know, like, like, uh, I, I I don't know. Mar- Marvel needs Marvel needs a big name behind it as well. Something something to get the 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 core base of fans excited again. You know, it's going to be hard for them because, first of all, DC got the jump on them. Yeah, DC has been doing this already for a couple of years. Yeah, where they've been hitting Marvel writers, and anyone gets good at, at, at in in Marvel, all of well, a sudden they're on DC. Look, here's the thing: like, like, like DC was in the shitter in the early 2000s. They yeah. they really weren't doing great stuff, no. and it wasn't until Jeff Johns came around with his uh with his rebirth, Green Lantern rebirth, Flash rebirth, the S- Revenge of the Sinestro Corps, and 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 started introducing the other colors and everything that that DC really started to pick up again with their storytelling before that it was marvel marvel's dominating with marvel knight they were dominating with the ultimate universe their yeah. main stories really weren't doing so hot the x-men was consistent but not good right you know it was really this off the wall other shit that they were doing i you know i i don't know marvel really needs to get their shit together because even so like they got avengers 675 coming out yeah and it introduces a new character who looks like the Sentry and is and, and Captain Marvel, blonde female Captain Marvel. So it's another female character that they, they created that looks like Sentry, and that's like the big deal the thing in, is, in Mar- the next Mar- Avengers Mar- thing. Marvel's that's what they're gonna, promoting. You know, you, you don't think that Disney has has had an effect on Marvel? Like, the problem is that Marvel now needs to bend, and they're notorious for not doing that. See, DC is going after everything they could go after. So what you're going to have to do now is, is hit the uh, the indie market, right? And the biggest writers, indie writers, are on Image. Well, here's the Image, problem. Image offers creator-owned stuff. Yes, like, so how are you going to take, like... You, you can't do... You can't do fucked up crazy shit with Captain America. You can't do fucked up crazy... No, but like, you, look, they tried to make him Hydra, and everyone flips out. But you don't have to. I mean, you know, Brian Vaughn wrote for Marvel for a really long time. And Vaughn did a lot of awesome shit for Marvel for a long time. I, look, to be, to be fair, too, listen, Amazing Spider-Man, Dan Slott, Mm-hmm. They need to keep that guy too. All right, the guy doesn't. Ama- That's the only one the, right now that's selling. Um, yeah. Amazing Spider-Man, solid book. I read Old Man Logan; it's great. Mm-hmm. I read, uh, I read Weapon X is great. Um, oh, I forgot to mention Bendis also brought the original X Men to the modern day too through all new X Men, and they're still here in X Men Blue, which I hate that, but he did it. Um, like, but Weapon X is great. Uh. uh um, I mean, are there any but, but here's the thing. Legacy Look, was great. I don't know where number two is, this, but it's it was great. You know, how, you know, you you agree that Secret Wars was a great event, right? Oh, Secret Wars was fantastic. Fantastic, right? Doctor Doom, all, that was amazing. Great. How do they just let Hickman, like Hickman walk away after that? And there's Marvel's problem. Like, how do you lose Hickman? What's Hickman on now? I don't even know. I don't know either. Hickman, he writes. He, I know that he writes for for Image. He writes for the Image. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they completely lost Hickman. Hickman walked away from Marvel. Secret Wars was the last. You thing know what? Though, done. Let's let's be fair. Hickman told the story he wanted to tell. He started writing Fantastic Four, which yeah. which led into New Avengers His and the Illuminati. Okay. And and basically his whole story was about the incursions. Mm-hmm. That was his thing, and it ended in Secret Wars. He told his story. Right. Maybe he was done. Mm-hmm. Let's be real. You know, but the, the, what we're seeing from the exodus of writers and artists from Marvel 
then we can't. We gotta assume that it's because something that Marvel's doing incorrectly. Maybe I mean, listen I, I, again. Like I said, I don't want to be unfair to Marvel. Marvel's still coming up with some great stuff right now. Still read the stuff. I mean, it's it, it's it's not bad. It's just it's disturbing to see to see such classic staples of the company disappearing like this and also like you know a downslope on sales you know that that you and i see clearly since we are we're, we're it's, here it's, in the comic and, and this business. is where dc is trying to absolutely kill marvel is um rebirth has been a huge success for huge DC. success and the metal story not only is, has is, rebirth has been a huge success rebirth has been well written all of it like every single Rebirth comic has been good. I don't read all of them, mm, but in, in the beginning, from the beginning, whoa, the, every, you don't think, I don't I'm, think. Okay, let, let me not no, say all of them. No. But for the most part, you have like maybe five week titles. All the Batman titles are good. All the Batman titles. All the Superman good. titles are good. All the Superman titles. Right. Are good. Cyborg was great. Cyborg Wonder Woman is great. Right. The Green Lantern books yeah, are great. So Flash is great. Some of the minor ones that yeah. aren't as good I as mean, they could be. Batgirl. Bagger was the Japan one was that was terrible. Uh, she goes to Japan and whatever, uh, yeah, and the uh, Birds of Prey. Okay, uh, but a lot of the Rebirth stuff has been good. Harley Metal Quinn. has been ha, ha, that's been a hit. Metal Har has yeah. Harley Quinn was not that great. Harley Quinn has taken a huge dip. Um, it has huge it has. dip. So many people were on it, and now it's just. Like, I thought Green Lanterns was good. Green Lantern was good, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but okay, I, but, but, I, so I, so. But here's a point that I'm trying to make. So yeah. DC right now is killing it. Yeah, right. Metal's been. Amazing. Yes. Right. So DC is killing it. They don't need to go out and get Bendis. They don't. This was just to like a win more, right? This was like this they, was. They're this already leading by like five touchdowns, and they're going for another touchdown instead of the extra point. I, yeah. Like it's very interesting how this is all this is all panning out. It, it's weird in the comic verse. What are they going to put them on? I, I, well, I, that, that was my next question. Okay, so Bendis, we we, we, we we gave our opinion of what this means for Marvel Comics. What does this mean for DC Comics? It's it's a huge deal. D this is a win more for DC. It's a, right, here's the deal. So you got metal happening right now. Um, Snyder's writing that. Yeah. Okay. Um, and and uh, post metal, Snyder has his Batman and the Signal book. Yeah. Which is supposed to take over where All Star Batman stops. And uh, Snyder's not going anywhere. DC's no. got him locked in. Jeff Johns is do is doing the button storyline into Doomsday Clock, yeah. which comes out next week. I'm super excited. By the way, yeah, it's, it's going to be fucking great. Which, Please subscribe. Which basically to the book, guys. it basically puts Superman against Doctor Manhattan. Mm -hmm. Okay, and God knows what happens after that. Okay, um, DC has Dan Jurgens on Action Comics, and right. Dan Jurgens is Superman. Yeah. Like him or not. He is Superman. He's been writing the book for decades, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so, you know, what's Bendis? Whatever Bendis' first thing is, it's going to be huge. So the question is, is are they going to give him this huge thing like Doomsday Clock? Or are they going to put him on a title? No, I think they're going to put him on a minor. minor I, don't, I don't think they're going to, they know what to do with him right now. See, I, see I'm going to make, I'm going to make a prediction here. He's going on Batman. He's been re on record no, no. saying that he wants to do a Batman. I think he's either going to go in at Batman 800 or Detective 900 or Action 1000. That's bold, but I, I can't see them taking that Batman away from Snyder. Batman doesn't write uh, Snyder doesn't write Batman right now. I know, but if if they're going to give it to someone, it has to be Snyder. Then do you think the resurgence of Batman? Right, was do, all do you Snyder. think they will take Ben? Do you think they will they will put Bendis on action with number one thousand and take Jurgens off? Probably. Or none of the above. Will they give him a story arc like Doomsday Clock or Blackest you, Night? You know, you know where Bendis. Or, you know where Bendis would be good. Where Flash? Great. Because he's good at a lot of that like quippy like dialogue. You know what I'm saying? Flash eight, like Flash eight hundred comes out. So so I think Bendis could write a character like Flash because you know Flash is always talking shit and qu little quips and whatever. And Bendis does that. Ben Bendis is good at conversational characters. What if they put him on Justice League? That would be a disaster. Why? Because Bendis writes too much. He does have a lot of dialogue. And, and not only does he have a, di a lot of dialogue, Bendis is good, not good on team books. And I'll say this is why because Bendis kind of gets lost with his dialogue and you can substitute any character there he doesn't really some, and I don't know if you've had this experience with Bendis like you can substitute any character with any character and it's fine yeah. like he doesn't really focus on their powers or, or anything like that so I think on a book like Justice League it would be too much talking so you think you think they're gonna put Bendis on a on a book instead of on a big event yeah 
as his as his first thing. Yeah, I I think they're gonna build into that, but I think they're gonna wa- they're gonna allow Bendis on a book like let's say Flash leading into may- maybe a major event next year. Or or do they give him a new title with the number one? Do they take a B character and 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 be like see like see what you do with it? I'm gonna make a prediction. Fuck this. I know I said action one thousand. I think Bendis is going on Hawkman number one. Okay. Give him Hawkman. Yeah. And they haven't announced Hawkman number one. Okay. They haven't announced it. But Hawkman plays a huge role in metal. He has one of those foil one shots coming out. The return of Hawkman. And he's a Justice League character. He's been around for decades. And I think Bendis is gonna do is gonna relaunch Hawkman. The same way that Jeff Johns relaunched Aquaman. I, I agree with you. I think Bendis on Hawkman. Um, but I'm gonna not to have the same prediction. He'll be my prediction is they're gonna stick him on a book like Flash, and they're gonna allow him to start developing whatever book he's on like Flash into what DC's next major event will be next year. Oh, he so I think he, he, def- of, he definitely is gonna write the next yeah, event. Yeah, so I think Hands DC's down. next Hands summer down. event is gonna be yeah. Bendis. Hands down. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Right, and, so, and that's where like Hawkman might not be the pick because Metals basically revolve, revolves around Hawkman. Yeah, but but you know you what? Let's, have let's, two let's, Hawkman events. Bendis can do more than one thing. He he currently yeah, currently right. he's doing Spider Man. He's doing Invincible Iron Man. Infamous Iron Man. Infamous ended. That's a shame. That's a shame too. Those. Wait, well, it ended. It was a twelve issue yeah. only, um, which was good about Doctor Doom. But he but but his ongoings were Invincible. Invincible and uh, and Spider Man. And Spider-Man. Not to mention he did a couple other little things here and there. I think that's it, right? Those yeah. are just those two. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, but they could. E- oh, he was on Jessica Jones, but again, that was ending. Yeah. E- easily, they could put him on a, a startup like Hawkman. Yeah, like Hawkman. They and could put, put him, him on, on Flash, Flash, right? And then build him up to another thing. He's <laughs> he's definitely capable of doing that. Yeah. Um, does how do you think this affects Jeff Johns' ego? It doesn't. Jeff Johns knows he's DC. Yeah, but Bendis, Bendis Bendis is his equal. They they won't sacrifice they won't sacrifice Jeff Johns for Bendis. I'm not saying they'll sacrifice Jeff. No, Johns I mean for I, I think that they'll capitulate to to Jeff Johns. Like if Jeff Johns gets starts getting butt hurt, they'll do whatever it takes to correct that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, uh, the news blew me away when I saw it. I was just like, it's pretty huge. I think um, this could kill Marvel. Nothing's gonna kill Marvel. No, I mean nothing's gonna kill, but this could make this could image could overtake Marvel. Like Marvel's sales no. are already that bad. No, no, Marvel's sales are horrible. Image is never gonna overtake Marvel. Oh, not, you not, think that? Not in our life. I don't believe that at all. Listen, and guys, listen. Marvel isn't bad. Like I said, there's some great titles happening in Marvel right now. It's just, it 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 has, it's got a bad rep. They 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 got a bad rep because of what they've done over the last couple of years. They've alienated a lot of readers. People see Bendis leave, and you know they're just like. It's like, oh man, I I used to love to go to this restaurant, but then some people got some food poisoning. If you poisoning. own Marvel stock, you're shaking. No way, because if you own Marvel stock, you 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 make money off the movies. It's all are, one. thing. Are the movies making too much money? That or do you think that eventually that they might just look at their comic division and be like, it, or are we at that point right now? No, D- Disney's never Disney's never going to lose the the comic division. No, they're not. They're not. Okay? it's like merchandise for their movies. It's merchandising for the movie. It's it's marketing for the movies, and we all know that fucking. Uh, you know, Disney at the end of the day probably really doesn't give a fuck about the comic. You know, but they understand that you know to get rid of the publisher, that's never going to happen. No, but they're making way they're making enough more money on the movies that the comics they're probably irrelevant. aren't they're relevant relevant yeah, to yeah, them yeah. anymore. I mean, I mean, DC can make the same argument. You don't think the CW shows and the animated movies and even the feature films are making more money for them than the comic division? Yeah, probably. Yeah, for sure. But but Marvel's like 18 movies in, so. Well, we'll see how Justice League does next week. I'm sure it's going to do great, whether it's good or not. It's still going to make tons of money. Whether or not it's going to hit Avengers dollars. I so don't, Marvel I don't buying know. Fox. Oh, we're not talking about that right now. Okay. Yeah, we're not, we're not talking about right now. One thing at a time. One thing at a time. This, this, this episode's all about Bendis. It's all about Bendis. Brian Michael Bendis. Leaving Marvel, going to DC... Big deal. We'll see what happens. I predict Hawkman. I put my money down on it. I see him on Flash. 
All right. He said Flash. I, I see Hawkman. Juan's looking for a social media handle, by the way. So be sure to, uh, you know, leave us comments to help him out for a social media handle. Um, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Uh, and uh, thanks for watching. We are here live at Corker Comics every Monday. You could check us out seven days a week, either at our Miami location on 107th and 8th Street across from FIU or in Pembroke Pines on Pines Boulevard, just east of University. Uh, for Atomic Pop featuring Fat Man and Little Boy, I am Stephen Corka. I'm still sick as fuck. And there you go. Adios.